Alrighty. Nice day. A little windy. How are we looking? Okay. Love that bokeh. You know what bokeh is? Like blurs out the background while keeping me in focus. It makes things look smooth. Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back for the final chapter of the week with chapter 7 of the book of John. More to cover today on the life of Jesus as we continue on through this gospel. Let's get it started, shall we? This is chapter 7. Opening up in this chapter, we're given a pretty surprising detail on the life of Jesus. His own brothers don't believe in him. Now in some ways this is surprising, and in other ways it's not. See, familiarity breeds contempt in many cases, and what was happening is that Jesus' own brothers, who've known him since he was a child, now view him as thinking that he's someone special. I mean, they've grown up with Jesus since he was a kid, so how can he possibly claim that he's now the chosen Messiah? Look at what they tell him in verses 3 through 5. His brothers therefore said to him, Depart from here and go into Judea that your disciples also may see the works that you are doing. For no one does anything in secret while he himself seems to be known openly. If you do these things, show yourself to the world. For even his brothers did not believe in him. Now the reason that Jesus wasn't going into Judea right away is because people wanted to kill him. Also, he knew that his time hadn't come yet. His brothers were trying to use this against him and saying that he should just openly walk in so everyone knew that he was there. But this wasn't Jesus. He was never pressured into doing anything based on people's opinions. He only did things on God's timetable. Now eventually Jesus did go up to Judea for the feast his own brothers were going to, but look at how he does it and what happens in verses 10 through 15. But when his brothers had gone up, then he also went to the feast, not openly, but as it were in secret. Then the Jews sought him at the feast and said, Where is he? And there was much complaining among the people concerning him. Some said, He's good. Others said, No, on the contrary, he deceives the people. However, no one spoke openly of him for fear of the Jews. Now about the middle of the feast, Jesus went up into the temple and taught, and the Jews marveled, saying, How does this man know letters, having never studied? Man, so much happening here. So Jesus at this point was a lightning rod for criticism. Listen, if you ever think that everyone just adored Jesus, think again. He split people right down the middle. Either you loved him and thought he was the Messiah, or you hated him and thought he was a false teacher. Now as Jesus starts teaching, people really do start to open up and wonder if he really is the Messiah. So look at verses 25 through 31. Now some of them from Jerusalem said, Is this not he who whom they seek to kill. But look, he speaks boldly, and they say nothing to him. Do the rulers know indeed that this truly is the Christ? However, we know where this man is from, but when the Christ comes, no one knows where he is from. Then Jesus cried out as he taught in the temple, saying, You both know me, and you know where I am from, and I have not come of myself, but he who sent me is true, whom you do not know. But I know him, for I am from him, and he sent me. Therefore they sought to take him, but no one laid a hand on him, because his hour had not yet come. And many of the people believed in him and said, when the Christ comes, will he do more signs than these which this man has done? Okay, Jesus is blowing people's minds, not just with miracles and healings, but his teaching is like nothing that people have ever heard before. He's not just reciting verses, but he's speaking with authority and power. Finally, look at this last passage where the religious leaders were trying to have him arrested, but no one will still touch Jesus. Look at this in verses 45 through 47. Then the officers came to the chief priests and Pharisees who said to them, why have you not brought him? The officers answered, No man ever spoke like this man. Then the Pharisees answered them, Are you also deceived? No man ever spoke like this. You know, people couldn't help but be amazed by Jesus' teaching. And what's so ironic is the religious leaders asking if someone else is deceived when they are actually the ones who were being deceived the entire time. Jesus was the promised Messiah, and he was about to frustrate the religious leaders more and more by proving it over and over again. All right, everyone, that's the end of chapter 7. If you can't tell by now, more and more people getting curious about Jesus. Is he really the Messiah? Well, we're going to be picking it back up on Monday with chapter 8 to further answer that question. Hope you all have a fantastic weekend and enjoy the beautiful weather. God bless you all. See you back here next week.